Hey kiddos, uh, we've got the feedback, spiral review, or spiral review, spiral whatever, spiral eight, that's what I was looking for, and it's the feedback part. Uh, this is my fourth video in a row, and I'm starting to crash a little bit, so I'll see if I can make it through this before I hit complete exhaustion. First off, we've got to take a derivative that involves some implicit differentiation. There are two things to keep in mind. The first is that we've got a product rule here, and the second is that every time we take a derivative that involves y, we have to use dy dx or y prime if you prefer. So, uh, starting this out, we got a product rule. That's going to be the second y times the derivative of the first, 2x, plus the first x squared times the derivative of the second. The derivative of y is 1 dy dx. And then minus 3x as a derivative of minus 3 y cubed has a derivative of 3y squared, and then we have to include a dy dx. Derivative of 3 is going to be 0. Okay, uh, you might find it easier to plug in the point now instead of actually uh, doing all this stuff out, but if you'd rather get the dy dx by itself first, that's okay too. Uh, that's a more useful skill for other problems, uh, so we'll talk about that now as well. Let's cluster the dy dx stuff on one side. Um, I might just minus an x squared dy dx. Sorry about that off-center fraction part. Uh, and that's going to make this part go away. So we'd have 2xy uh, minus 3. I know I'm going to factor out a dy dx. of 3y squared minus x squared. Uh, and when I divide that, we get 3y squared minus x squared on the bottom. That's my dy dx. Uh, one of the issues I saw here was not taking the derivative, just plugging the points in, which does not work. Again, as soon as you take the derivative, you could plug the point in, and that would give you less likely for error. Uh, but I want to talk about doing this all out. So we've got 2 times negative 1 times 2 for 2xy minus 3 over 3 times 2 squared minus negative 1 squared. And that's going to be 2 times negative 1 times 2 is negative 4, minus 3. 3 times 2 squared is going to be 12, and that's going to be minus positive 1. Negative 7 over 11. All right, next up, we've got a derivative, because the slope of the tangent line is a derivative. And when we do this, we're going to have the derivative of ln of stuff, which is going to be 1 over stuff, multiplied by the derivative of stuff. The derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. Uh, this is going to be 2x over x squared, which when I reduce is going to be 2 over just x. So when I now plug in my value, which is e squared, we get 2 over e squared is our answer. For number 8, the derivative of 2 to the x. Uh, this is just taking a look at your derivative rules. The derivative of a to the x is going to be a to the x times ln of a. Almost stopped the recording in time, but I didn't quite make it. That's okay. You guys missed most of the bell. Uh, so when we apply that, the derivative of 2 to the x is going to be 2 to the x times the ln of 2. Uh, again, this is not so useful of a derivative rule to memorize, but you have the rules in front of you because uh, you have your derivative rules to live by sheet. That would be a worthwhile thing to be able to just kind of look at and be able to pick that up. Next up, we've got uh, some RAM and some integrals area stuff. Uh, the first part is asking about a bug crawling up a vertical wire, and the velocity is given by this graph over here. 
uh, the total distance. That's a really big deal uh, because that means that we don't care if this thing is positive or negative. We're going to add those up anyway. That the bug travels from 0 to 8. So this is really an area question. We're accumulating distance as we go. Uh, I'm going to break this up into pieces that are easy to do. Uh, triangle number 1 is 2 by 3, which is 6. So that has an area of 3. Rectangle is going to be 2 by 3. That has an area of 6. Triangle 2 is going to be 2 by 3. And you might get the point now. We have an area of 3 as well. Uh, below the x-axis, we have an area of 1. If we were talking about how high this bug was, we'd have to consider that as negative. But since we're only talking about the total distance, we're going to add each of these three pieces. We don't care about the direction. So we get 3 plus 6 plus 3. And then we add that fourth piece plus another 1 because, again, we don't care about the direction. And that gives me 13 as the area. If you got 11 as an answer, uh, that means that you did the negative for that value, which is totally correct as far as finding the area. Uh, but it misses the idea of total distance instead of uh, displacement from where you start. For number two, we've got a trapezoidal sum over approximating um, and a right Riemann sum under approximating. Uh, what this really comes down to is being able to draw a single trapezoid or a rectangle and seeing which one of these fit. So if I look at A, for example, by the way, this can be the answer. Uh, a single trapezoid means that we'd be looking at something like this. And because the trapezoid is above, that means that we're over-approximating. In terms of these problems, uh, B would be under-approximating, D would be over, C would be under, and E would be exact. Uh, a rule of thumb, concave up means that trapezoids are over-approximates. Concave down means that trapezoids are under-approximates. Uh, I like how it's made up the word approximate instead of using the word approximation, which is the right word to use there. Uh, the next part is a right Riemann sum under approximates something. So if I start on the right side and draw my rectangle, on this guy, which is still A, we are under the curve. And if I take a look at the other curves, a right rectangle would go over. Uh, it would be under C, it would be over D, and it would be over E. Anything that's increasing, a right rectangle would be an under-approximation for. And by increasing, I mean decreasing. As I said, I'm kind of crashing now, so I apologize for the wordage that's going on here. Uh, I feel bad if you're not listening to this, because this is an entertaining video to say. And if you're just watching the uh, words show up on the screen, you're missing out, and now you're confused about why on earth there's this frowny face being drawn.